Uh, catalysts uh, have a couple characteristics. You learn about this a little bit in the transition metal section because transition metals are great catalysts in general. So iron, platinum, rhodium, iridium, etc. Great catalysts. This was my uh, research area. Why are they? What do they do? A couple things they do. They change the pathway of the reaction profile. You might want to write this down. They increase the rate of reaction. So changing the pathway. I'll give you an example in just a second. They increase the rate of reaction, so they make things go faster. Uh, and then another the thing, equilibrium is not affected by a catalyst. Uh, mentioned that when we did equilibrium back in 2B, but essentially equilibrium is not affected. So just the rate, it'd be as if uh, you think of the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, if you increase the speed limit from say 65 to 80, you would not change the population in San Francisco or Oakland, you would just allow for faster rates to go between the two things, okay? So it doesn't affect equilibrium, it does increase the rate, it changes the path. So uh, basically it lowers the activation energy. A catalyst will lower the activation energies. So instead of a very big hump to go over, it has a smaller hump. Um, so they're helpful for that. You can have uh, catalysts that are in the same phase. So for example, you're doing solution chemistry in your labs and you have a catalyst that is in solution. Or they can be in different phases. Uh, so your catalyst could be a solid. And I'll give you an example in a minute. And your, but you have a liquid solution. OK, uh, so an example would be like your catalytic converter in your car. Uh, that's you know the exhaust that comes out. Right before the exhaust, there's a hump in your pipe work in your car, that's a catalytic converter. That uh, converts the nasties that come out of your engine into less nasties. So now you wouldn't want to necessarily breathe what's coming out of your exhaust, but it is less harmful. So a lot of the carbon monoxide, for example, which is dangerous, it binds to your blood, your heme, and prevents oxygen from binding. Uh, that goes to CO2. So you get a lot more CO2 out than you would without that. Inside that catalytic converter, uh, if you open it up, it's kind of a honeycomb, sort of Swiss cheese look. Um, that's, uh, could be various things, but kind of a, like zeolite, Swiss cheese sort of structure. And in that Swiss cheese structure are metals, which are the catalysts. So the, the honeycomb structure holds the catalyst, and it's in the solid state. Um, and when the gas, whatever it's uh, nitrogen oxide, sulfur oxide, whatever, goes through there, hits the solid, it converts to uh, things that are a little more healthy for our environment, like CO2, N2O2, water, whatever. So uh, that's an example of something that has more than one phase. Gas input and gas output, but the catalyst is a solid. Uh, the reason that you have the honeycomb structure in there, it maximizes the surface area. Instead of just having an open thing you just toss metal in, if you have a Swiss cheese structure, uh, it has a lot of surface area. So you can put uh, a lot of metal and a lot of places for reactions to happen. Okay, so that's my little bit about catalysts. Uh, biological catalysts are called enzymes. They kind of have this lock and key method, so they fit hand in glove uh, to the substrate and the product. Um, uh, and you can see this uh, picture, or a picture like this in your text. Uh, I think the most helpful picture might be this one, though. Here, E stands for enzyme, that's the catalyst. S stands for uh, the substrate, that's what's the reactant, basically. The substrate comes in, I mean, they don't look like that, but just to show you, it matches. So they match up whatever they happen to look like. It sits and uh, makes this intermediate enzyme substrate entity, and then the substrate reacts to form one or more products that come off. Now, if the substrate didn't match the enzyme or vice versa, this reaction wouldn't happen. 
So the enzymes in your body are, uh, shape is very important. And uh, how they're oriented in space is very important. This is the general way that a catalyst goes. What we're going to do uh, is analyze the rate of a catalyst uh, and do a, a little bit of stuff with it. So take a look at this, write that down, uh, and we're going to solve, and I just got this from the previous slide, that enzyme plus substrate goes to this uh, in intermediate enzyme substrate entity, and then pro in this case just one product comes off, but you have multiple products. <laughs> Uh, what's what? So S is the substrate, E is the enzyme. The substrate is the reactant, essentially. E is the catalyst. So notice the catalyst is not consumed in the reaction. It comes out as the enzyme again, ready to react with another substrate. Uh, and the first one is reversible, so once the substrate attaches on, it could jump back off. Uh, but if it decides to go, it's going to go and form the products, it's not coming back. It's not going back to be the substrate again. Uh, 